kind of sunny evening. Um, I also, I, I know you didn't come here to listen to me talk, so I, I, I'll keep my remarks very brief. Um, but I do want to send out a couple of appreciations. Um, one, I want to appreciate our panelists for coming tonight. Thank you. Um, I have to do our moderator. Appreciate that. I also want to thank the uh, Unitarian Church of Montpelier. Um, and then I want to uh, send some, some appreciation out to our event sponsors. So that's Progressive Asset Management, that's Main Street Landing, Aqua Vidye Kombucha, and Skinny Pancake. And then I want to send a big uh, shout out and appreciation to Jillian Mayer in the back for carrying the bulk of the laboring ore to put this together. So. So as you probably know, the Vermont Chapter of the Sierra Club and 350 Vermont are actively pursuing fossil fuel divestment campaigns. And we're thrilled that, that it's finally, we're getting some, some really meaningful traction on this issue. Uh, as, as you're probably aware, there's divestment bills in both chambers of the State House, as well as a joint resolution. Uh, we met with Treasurer Pierce multiple times. Just yesterday, in fact, she, she issued a press release on climate change engagement. Uh, Maeve McBride was on Vermont edition last week uh, talking about divestment. And of course, uh, you know, in the state, we've had three colleges divest or commit to divesting from fossil fuels. And then there's lots of worldwide movement uh, attraction. The Guardian recently divested, of course, I'm sure you've heard of the Rocket. Rockefeller Brothers Fund divested as well. So um, we're thrilled about the traction that the divestment is getting. And, uh, and we're going to dig into that conversation a little more tonight. Uh, we're going to have a, this panel discussion uh, as we, and then followed by a Q&A. So hang on to your questions and, uh, and I'll run around with the mic and we'll make sure we, 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 we answer your questions. Um, so without further ado, I want to uh, introduce to you our moderator. Uh, Kathy Bloom, she's on the board of 350 Vermont. She's, she also is a co-founder of Vermont Debate, which is a sustainability game. Um, she's a writer, an actor, and, uh, and perhaps most apropos tonight, a climate activist. So, Kathy? Seattle would look like under 20 feet of water. 
and they show a mock-up illustration of the space needle half submerged in the rising tide. Now the only good news in the face of this nightmarish narrative is that the scientists are saying it's not going to happen for hundreds of years. It's way far off in the future, which will hopefully give us plenty of time to solve the problem before things get, shall we say, charismatic. But I remember thinking, wow, I have no desire to see that. None. And that was the first time in my life that I didn't want to live forever. Well, it turns out you don't have to live forever to see things that you really don't want to see. Now, fast forward to 2008, when NASA's chief climate scientist, James Hansen, writes a paper saying that the maximum safe level for atmospheric carbon dioxide is 350 parts per million, a number that we had then and certainly have now already blown way past. But armed with that number, Bill and a small group of Middlebury College students take up the charge and a global climate movement is born. The first set of tactics had to do with just getting the world to understand and pay attention to what was going on. Then, they had to figure out what we were going to do to fix the problem. Now, stop burning fossil fuels is the simple answer, but the reality is profoundly complex. And painfully hamstrung by the fact that the fossil fuel companies are regularly making more money than God. Forgive me, it's very church. <laughs> <laughs> and they have absolutely no desire to see even a microscopic dent in their galactic profit margin. They also have a lot of cash to throw around, fund the campaigns of morally bankrupt legislators, and obscure even the clearest of scientific arguments. Now, here's where things get both interesting and relevant to tonight's discussion. In 2012, when Bill and 350 first started talking about divesting from the fossil fuel industry as a significant tactic for climate activism, the argument, much like when we were fighting apartheid in South Africa, was primarily an ethical one. They basically said, these companies are making money hand over fist by polluting the planet to the brink of extinction. And if you care about the fate of the world, then you have a moral imperative to withdraw your investments. And as Nate said, that argument has worked pretty well with quite a number of colleges, municipalities, and in a moment of exquisite irony, the Rockefeller Foundation. <coughs> but what we've come to learn is that for a number of reasons, which I think this panel will share, it's actually also sound financial behavior. The Guardian just last week reported that over the last five years, investors who have dumped holdings in coal, oil, and gas earned an average return of 1.2% more a year than people who stayed tied to the fossil fuel industry. Now, to bring this all back to a very personal perspective, I run this community climate game called Vermont Today, and this year we were looking to hire an intern from Champlain College to help us out. One of the candidates who we eventually hired was a senior from New Jersey named Rob. Now, Rob wants to be an investment banker. He was very clear about that when he graduates. And it was obvious from his application that he doesn't have much experience with or even very much interest in climate change. So I asked him why he wanted to intern with us, a, a nonprofit climate game. And he said, well, <clears throat> I totally get that fossil fuels aren't a good investment anymore. That's obvious. And I want to work with you guys so I can learn about alternative energy, and it'll be a valuable piece of knowledge to have on my resume. I was blown away. A 20-year-old pinstripe-wearing business major from New Jersey who states as inarguable fact that fossil fuel investments are a sinking ship. It's hardly just a moral argument anymore. And that is why this is a historic moment. This is the moment when the tide is really starting to turn. And if we are brave and determined enough, we all have the opportunity to be part of it in a really big way. So with that, let's turn to our panel and get really down and dirty on divestment. Now, a little side note here. All of these folks sitting at this table have, have resumes that are as long as, well, not mine, more like those are. And there's nothing more draining to an audience than reading a really long bio. So by way of introduction, I'm just going to give you their highlights. But trust me when I tell you that these folks are educated, 
credential, experienced, and passionate. They are here tonight because they are people who know.